Hey YouTube, it's Matt with Homeless Reptiles, and we are going to talk about line breeding today. Line breeding, is it fact or is it fiction? Well, that may depend on if you're from uh, West Virginia or not. But in our version of line breeding, and if you're not from West Virginia and now hate me, maybe you should go ahead and click like, subscribe, and go check out the Patreon. Even jump on that free trial if you want. Um, and I, I can make those kind of jokes because I got family in Arkansas, and there is no state who's had more jokes made about it than Arkansas when it comes to line breeding and family trees looking straight as a stick. Uh, although I can tell you mine forked at least twice. So maybe don't warn that. <laughs> anyway, we're going to talk about line breeding and reptiles today, though. And can you line breed to get a desired effect? It's one thing to have genes. Everybody can see the genes and everybody can be like, oh, this plus this plus this is this. And that's all well and good. And that's a piece of the puzzle. But I'm going to tell you something. I personally believe that line breeding, breeding for certain looks within that genetic, is another piece of the puzzle to make exceptional animals. Above and beyond just having the gene. Having the gene, that's amateur hour. Okay, Anybody... Anybody can put two snakes together and pop out an incomplete dominant gene, okay? Anybody with money can buy high-end snakes and put two snakes together with incomplete dominant genes and pop out that combo. It is not rocket science. I promise. It is not the measure of how good somebody is at this. I promise you that too. The thing to really look for is are they improving that gene? The old saying used to be quality in, quality out. And I think that is a very, very good saying. So we're going to talk about one if it's real, two, the results of line breeding, and three, how you go about that business. It's usually going to take you a couple generations to at least start seeing the results. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to say the first thing that we really worked hard on uh, was, was spider. And I know spider is a bad word, but just bear with me here. I've always really liked the spider pattern. What I did not like is a lot of spiders have dots. I'd pull one out and show you, but I really don't have any that have that anymore where you'd have the pattern along, you kind of see the alien had dots up and down the side. I wasn't a big fan of that. I had certain looks in my spider, do you want to grab them way talk really quick, mm -hmm. that I bred for. So what you would do is when you would first breed something with spider, you would only keep back ones that fit the description of what you wanted. If it didn't fit that description, it's out. And that'll lead to, to eventually get to something like this. So this is one of our in-house bred zebra bees we held back. Why do I like this spider? Again, you're going to see there's no real spots like we talked about. You look at the sides of this snake through here, right? None. It's perfect. No spot, 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 spot. That stuff's all gone. And that's gone by design. That didn't happen on accident. I knew damn well when we bred these, they were going to come out like this because their parents are like this and the grandparents are like this. And generations back, you'll start to find some spots. We did not keep anything like that. We purposely moved to this look. Not only is it getting rid of those spots, that's one piece of the puzzle on what I like in spider. Now you may say, Matt, I like the spots, and I think it needs to have the spots, and it should have more crazy, less clean. That's personal choice. You should line breed for that then. The other thing we were really looking for is what I call drips. When you look at the snake here, you'll see what I'm talking about. I want the black pattern to drip into the white. Here, this is not a good example of a drip. It doesn't come down far enough. You're not going to get it all the way across the board. Look here, all the way down around the belly. Pretty decent, all the way down, all the way down. All the way down to the belly. Pretty decent. All the way, eh, pretty decent. All the way down. Little bitty drip coming in there. All the way down, almost a circle. When you get close to the tail, you're going to get less drip. Still get a little bit. Um, but that is something else we line bred for. I want my black to trace down into the white. And I want no spotting on the alien heads. Because from my eye, that is the perfect look for a spider. Anything with a bunch of spots looks like shit. And for me, I will not keep it. So early on, all the spiders I was letting go that uh, for combos I wanted to make were all have spots. There were a few times I didn't even keep back the sex I wanted to because I didn't have an example that was up to the quality of what I wanted to use for future breed stock. If it's not up to the quality that you want to have and what you sell, don't keep it because you're going to move towards that quality more and more each generation, each step of the way until you can get this repeating in a consistent, almost every time basis. And I know that if I sell one of these now, that looks like this, that person who buys it and breeds it is going to be able to repeat this look. Uh, now, back in the day, you could probably charge a little more for something like this over just the genes. Sadly, today's world, people are, are not doing that because they just are looking for, does it have this, 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 or this in it? But that doesn't mean that we as breeders should not be striving to achieve the best looking example of the Morpher Combo. 
If you're not striving to achieve the best looking example for your eye, you're doing it wrong. I'll stand by every day of the week. I don't care if there's more money in it or not. It's about producing a product that I'm proud of. I am extremely proud of this animal, 100%. Um, you know, I know where the exantic line came from. You can also see my head there. This one, I mean, this is a spider, but it's not going to do loopy loops even out. Uh, great animal. You can see more of that drip I'm talking about. It's really evident on this side. Bang, bang, bang. Uh, that's a, not a spot. That's where a drip didn't have a line. This here is not my favorite thing to have. You're going to have some of that. I would rather it be connected through here, but it is what it is. Great drip, great drip, great drip, great drip, great drip, great drip. Good drip, great drip. It's throughout. This is re reproducible. Even though the only genes in here are spider, pastel, SK Xanthic. And the SK Xanthic line came from, uh, I believe this one originated through John Dog, as well as possibly some tall grass in there. So we'll let you toss that one back. I'm also going to show you another example of lion breeding. And this is a snake that we've sold, but it's one of the nicer examples. We just didn't have a spot for it. So this went to one of our Patreon members. We're just waiting to not be in four inches of snow to ship it. Uh, <coughs> he'll know if he's watching. He'll be like, that's my snake! And it is a perfect example. Is this one male or female? I forget. Female. Female. We just don't need any of the single gene right now with what we're doing, so we decided to go ahead and part with this. So when you look at this, uh, that's pretty badass. And this is a single gene, okay? This is not a combo. There's no other genes in here at play. The only thing in this snake is Blitz. And if you want to say Blitz, Trick, or uh, Hurricane... They're all probably the same. I know there's a guy in uh, Germany who will, Germany isn't it? Or Russia or whatever, Germany. Germany, who will tell you that there's no such thing as a super blitz. That's funny, I've got to. And uh, that they're not the same because hurricane looks different, looks better. This looks pretty much as good or better than any hurricane that guy's ever produced or seen in a single gene. It just does. You're not going to see a better looking one here, depending on what you're looking for. But I want my blitz. I want a lot of pattern. I think they need to have as much pattern arboration as possible. So all through here. This one is very, very blown out. I like that look. It almost looks like a super blitz. As a matter of fact, we can compare one if we got one sitting back there, don't we? Not ready, no. Not ready to compare? No. Okay. Uh, so you can kind of see what's what's going on with that. Uh, you're also going to see a lot of twisting. Now, originally what we look for in a blitz is a, what we call the strongman arms. This one, the pattern has been so widened out in, you're not going to even have a lot of that. You're going to see it going here, but it's so blown out it doesn't look like it's flexing muscles, but you're kind of looking for that twisting going on in there. And you're going to see that here. Uh, you're going to see it here. You're going to see it all throughout really, really well. These would show more if they weren't as blown out with the dark blacks. This snake is phenomenal for a single gene blitz. It doesn't get better, guys. But again, this has been done because we only keep back the very best of what we produce. If I was needing a single gene blitz right now, this is what I would hold back. This is the expectation for single gene blitz in my collection moving forward. Uh, anything less than this doesn't make the cut. Why? Because that's how you line breed. You line breed by keeping the example that best fits what you want to do. So uh, I'm pretty proud to sell this snake too, to be honest. I, I, I think whoever gets this gonna, well I know it's gonna, they're gonna get it in person and just be like, damn, this thing looks way better than I ever could have imagined. And that's the reaction we want. Caleb, anything you want to add to this? I think it's also important to remember that when you're buying snakes, it's not just what is the cheapest I can find or the first one that I find. <coughs> it's, yeah. is this a good quality version of this? I've seen some genes that I wanted to add, and I looked at it, and I'm like, I see where you say it's there, and I see why you think yeah. it's there, but I have to, if you would have not asked me what, if you would have asked me what the genetics were without telling me the parents, without telling me the genetics, that's not what I would have guessed. It's not a snake I'm buying. You should probably, a good rule of thumb is to only add a snake you would have been excited to produce. And not just by the genetic count, by the look. Yeah. I think right now we're so busy based, basing how many genes I can put in there. I'm not enough of, not only is it the best quality, but do these two genes actually amplify and go good together? Or is this just two genes I'm just throwing together to try and get as many genes in one snake as I can? Yeah. Are we gene stacking or are we creating? Yeah. That's absolutely. Kurt, anything you want to add? No. What's your favorite example of, of the two we showed? The spider and how we lion bred that or the blitz and how we lion bred that? 
The Blitz. The Blitz. And I can tell you guys, this is not something that we invented. We did not invent line breeding. Line breeding has been a thing talked about in the reptile industry since long before I ever got involved. And it should be talked about long after I'm done. Because quality in, quality out is exactly what they're talking about. If you use good quality, you're going to produce good quality. And you're going to keep better quality. You're going to keep the best examples and continue to improve the look of that gene. That's kind of my feeling. All right, guys, that's all we got. Anything you want to add? Nope. Kurt? So is it fact or fiction? Oh, it's fact. It's 100% fact. You can line breed in anything. I mean, even humans. And there are people like, ooh, gross. No, think about it. I mean, line breeding doesn't mean necessarily only in the family. Line breeding means keeping the right traits and purposely bringing the right traits together. Uh, that's terrible in humans because it takes away free will, which we don't want to do. But, I mean, you can look back in old monarchy. An old monarchy was line bred to keep power, Right? Uh, and they end up all being intermixed and related. And that's the wrong version of lion breeding because you start getting some club-footed, fucked-up people. Uh, but that's all from lion breeding and not diversifying your bloodline enough. So it absolutely is a real thing. And the reason it's real is because it's not just Blitz that makes this, okay? Blitz is a single piece of the DNA puzzle on this thing. The, the rest of the DNA, the other 99.9999% of it, comes from its two parents and is also passed along. So in essence, when you're line breeding, what you're doing is passing a lot of those genes that we don't see every day, that don't have a morph name to it, that go well with blitz. Kind of like uh, in humans, you know, there are, are I mean, God, i got to be really careful for the sake. I know, you're really like. Uh, you know, there, but there are genes that go together better, right? Some people are going to prefer those genes stacked together. Uh, they're not necessarily morphs. You know, maybe... Somebody has what they would call an excellent jawline. It's not a morph, but in their family history, in their DNA, there it is. These snakes are no different. So in that long line of DNA that's going to cause that pattern, if you were to stress that back to a normal, that's what's going into making that the best version of Blitz. By keeping those and breeding those, you're more likely to make that. Is that correct? Yep. I went with a jawline. Yes. I'll tell you what I almost went with on Patreon. Then it would have made me, it would have just been horrible. All right, guys, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.